Hello friends. Today we will discuss gauge of a railway track. The gauge of a railway track is the clear distance between inner or running faces of two track rails. This is the track and this is the running face of the rail and therefore the gauge is defined as the clear distance between running faces of two rails of the track. Initially, the gauge of a 5 feet was adopted by British Railways and that was the time when the wheel flange were outside the rail. That was the type of wheel and axle arrangement at that time. The flange was outside the rail and therefore the gauge was defined as the clear distance between the outer faces of the rails. Running faces are now outer faces and this gauge was kept exactly 5 feet. Subsequently, it was found that there is not much advantage of keeping these wheel flange outside the rail and therefore they were changed to the inner side like this. Now wheel flange is on the inner side and accordingly the definition of gauge changed. It is now the clear distance between inner faces of the rails and therefore the new gauge is old gauge minus twice the width of the rail top. And width of rail top at that time was 1.75 inch and therefore new gauge is 5 minus twice of 1.75 that is 4 feet 8.5 inch or you can say 1435 millimeter. And this is the standard gauge in most of the countries even today. In fact, 62% of the world railway is laid on this standard gauge. Countries like UK, USA, Canada, China, they all have the standard gauge of 1435 millimeter. In India, East Company adopted 1.676 meter or 5.5 feet as the standard gauge and it was called the broad gauge. And countries like Pakistan, Brazil and Argentina they also have the broad gauge of 1.676 meter. In total, you can say 6% of world railway is laid on this gauge. In 1871, to build cheap rails, the British Railway adopted 1 meter as the gauge width and it was called the meter gauge. And then for development of the hilly regions and poor areas, a narrow gauge of 2 feet 6 inch or 0 0.762 meter was also adopted and feeder gauge of 0.61 meter or 2 feet was adopted for industrial purposes. So in nutshell, there are four gauges. Broad gauge is a wider gauge and it was adopted to keep trains stable in the face of strong monsoon winds in the country. Meter gauge was adopted as economical measure, narrow gauge for development of hilly regions and poor regions and light gauge is primarily for industrial purposes which are laid within an industry. Now how do we select a gauge? Now what are the factors which influence the choice of the gauge? How do we select gauge for a country or for an area? The first is cost consideration. Proportional increase in the cost of acquisition of land earthwork, rails, sleepers, ballast and other track items when constructing a wider gauge. Second is the cost of building bridges, culverts and tunnels increases only marginally due to a wider gauge. This cost does not change much with the width of the gauge. Similarly, the cost of constructing station buildings, platforms, staff quarters, level crossing, signals, etc. They are almost same for all gauges and the cost of rolling stock is independent of the gauge of the track for carrying the same volume of traffic. Now rolling stock here means wagons, coaches and engines. The second consideration is traffic consideration, speed and volume. As a wider gauge can carry larger wagons and coaches, it can theoretically carry more traffic. And second is a wider gauge has a greater potential at higher speeds because speed is the function of diameter of the wheel and diameter of the wheel is 
the function of width of the gauge. As a thumb rule, diameter of the wheel is capped 75 percent of the gauge width. And therefore, more the diameter, more will be the speed of the train. And third point is the type of traction and signaling equipment required are independent of the gauge. Third point is terrain of the country. As I told you, wider gauges were adopted for keeping the train stable in the face of a strong monsoon winds, and they are also suitable for plain areas, narrow gauges for hilly area and steep terrain where the gradient is more prominent. Curves curves are. More frequent in those situations, narrow gauge is more suitable. Gauge for a country should be uniform as far as possible. In almost all developed countries, the standard gauge of 1.435 meter has been adopted uniformly. But as I told you, there are three different gauges in India which have been adopted, and this multi-gauge system has given birth to many problems. The first is inconvenience to the passengers at the point of junction of two gauges passengers have to change the train along with their luggage and this causes many problem to them each time they have to climb stairs and foot over bridge to change the platform to catch new train they have to face problems of getting accommodation in the new compartment and while changing the train they are harassed by the coolies if old train is late and they may miss the new train and that would result in delay in reaching the destination and doing shifting of the train there is always chances of theft or misplacement of luggage the second is difficulty in movement of goods similar to passengers goods are also to be shifted from one wagon to another wagon at the point of junction of two gauges and it may cause damage to goods during transfer or misplacement or theft during transfer non availability of labor particularly at the time of strike may be a problem or may delay the movement of the goods and then additional facilities like sheds equipments etc are to be provided to handle the large amount of goods for two different gauges in efficient use of rolling stock wagons of one gauge cannot be used on another gauge and similarly the locomotive of broad gauge cannot be used on meter gauge or narrow gauge and vice versa and that creates inefficiency of use of rolling stock the fourth is hindrance to fast movement of goods and passenger traffic now due to break in the journey traffic cannot move fast that creates unnecessary delay which is most undesirable during emergency or during war then additional facilities are required at stations and yards costly sheds and other facilities are required for handling large volume of goods at junction points duplicate equipment like yards engines for handling goods from two gauges are to be provided at the point of junction of two gauges difficulty in balanced economic growth difference in gauge also leads to unbalanced economic growth this happens because industry set up near mg or ng station cannot send their goods economically and efficiently to areas being covered by broad gauge stations and that creates unbalanced situation of economic growth in two areas difficulties in future gauge conversion projects that is very difficult to convert meter gauge to broad gauge or narrow gauge to broad gauge it has deep financial implications because you need to widen the embankment bridge tunnels track in fact entire track structure is to be replaced when you convert meter gauge to broad gauge you need longer sleepers heavy rail sections more depth of ballast and the entire rolling stock is to be replaced and again when i say rolling stock it means wagons coaches and engines so it has deep financial implications so these are the problems of multi gear system and considering these problems government of india launched 
project Unigaze on April 1, 1992 and this is an ongoing effort by the Indian Railways to convert and integrate all Indian gauges to a standard 1676 millimeter that is 5 feet 6 inch broad gauge and the single lane or single gauge policy makes alternative routes available for free traffic and reduces congestion on existing broad gauge network. As on March 2022, total 95.67% of the track length is of broad gauge. Meter gauge is now 2.43% and narrow gauge is 1.9% only. And this task of converting meter gauge to broad gauge is continuing. But lines that will not be converted are the heritage line. For example, on meter gauge, this Nilgiri mountain rail in Tamil Nadu, that is 46 km long track, will not be converted to broad gauge. Similarly, Kalka Shimla narrow gauge lines, which is 94 km, or Kangda Valley Railway, which is 164 km, or maybe Darjeeling Himalayan Railway in West Bengal, and Metharan Hill Railway in Maharashtra which is on narrow gauge line will not be converted because they have been declared the heritage lines. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you understood the concept of gauge and problems associated with multi-gauge system and how government of India is tackling this problem. You can write a suggestion and comments in the comment box.